So, but anyway, tonight's a little bit of review. On January the 2nd of this year, I preached Do More Towards Heaven in 2011. Do More Towards Heaven in 2011. And tonight is a little bit of review. A review is something that we go back over and uh, look at. A lot of times, you know, you hear messages preached during the new year um, as, uh, you know, things that you, you, that you need to do and start to do and uh, throughout the year, and then you never hear it again until next year until you get another sermon on New Year's uh, resolutions or, or whatever you want to call them, and then you never hear them again. But I don't like that personally. I, I like to review them and see how you're doing. It's kind of like doing a checkup. Uh, after you know, you go to the doctor and you get, uh, as I found out, is you go to the doctor, they poke you and you know, stick you and they look at your mouth and your nose and your ear. And the doctor, I went to the doctor today and I was kind of joking around with him. I don't know if he's one of these doctors that jokes or not, but I figured I'd find out. He uh, he said, uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, how much weight have you gained in the last couple of years? I said, I don't know, about 25 or 30 pounds. He said, why is that? I said, I'm eating more. <laughs> He laughed. He said, well, why do you eat more? I said, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and so he laughed a little bit. He said, no, for real, why? <laughs> I said, I don't know. And so he said, okay. He said, well, you might want to lose a few pounds. And I said, well, I said, you're probably right. I do need to lose a few pounds. And so, uh, but when you go to the doctor, you know, they, they, they look in every hole you got in the body and, and they check your pulse and your heart rate and take you to cough and breathe in and all that kind of stuff. And you... Then they prescribe a medicine, and then they say, come back in 30 days or two weeks. Then we're going to do a follow-up, kind of like a review. And uh, we're going to see how you're doing. Well, this has been uh, since January uh, the 2nd. I guess it's been now about, uh, about three months now, and so three and a half months. And so we're going to do a little review tonight. And <clears throat> I doubt if you remember what, even what I preached on or what I spoke on. But we'll, uh, I'm not going to preach the whole message. I'm just going to um, touch on the points, and then I'm going to give you something else. And so this ain't going to beat you up where you're at. And this is only to encourage you <clears throat> as your pastor, just to encourage you to do uh, maybe a resolution that you uh, promised the Lord or promised yourself or, or whatever, and to continue. You know, sometimes it's, um, it's easy to start running the race. And, you know, we get tired uh, uh, in the middle, or we get tired towards the beginning or towards the end, and we... Uh, we get all hot and sweaty and worn out, and the muscles get tired, and and so therefore we uh, we have to have a little push sometimes, or a little encouragement, or a kind word, or something. And so this is what this is um, tonight. Uh, I spoke on uh, on January second on do more towards heaven in 2011. We turn to First Corinthians chapter 15. If you'll turn there, we're going to look at these verses again, and this was the starting point. Of this New Year's uh, message in 2011 to encourage us to work to to do more this year than maybe we did last year or ever before in our Christian wall, and so we looked at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, and as you know, this is the great resurrection uh, uh, chapter of the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and uh, and it says in verse 51 where we're going to begin reading. Verse 51 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, um, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
And that's where we started about three months ago, three and a half months, talking about doing more towards heaven in 2011. First thing that I looked at four different areas that we should strive to do more. First of all, I talked about personal spiritual growth. Personal spiritual growth. And I began talking about Bible reading and talking about Bible reading. Now this person in here tonight, I got this, and I'm going to tell you whose it is. But this is, uh, this is someone's Bible reading. Already this year, they've already read through the Bible, one, the whole Old Testament, it's not mine. Uh, the Old Testament, one complete time, and the New Testament twice already. And they have started for the second time going back through their Bible already in just three and a half months. And so I'm not going to tell you who it is. They didn't tell me I could. They didn't know I was going to do that. Uh, and so you might be surprised who it is. But that's great. That's great. Now, maybe that's not you. So I only can do the four uh, uh, verses a day. That's great. Do the four verses. Continue abounding in the work of the Lord. That's what we was talking about three months ago about Bible reading. Maybe you're starting a Bible reading plan back here that I made up. And maybe you kind of got sidetracked. Maybe you got sidetracked with work. Maybe you got sidetracked with this, that, or the other thing. But I encourage you tonight, just keep on. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going. Bible memorization. Um, I had a goal this year, and I still got a goal of learning two verses per week. Two verses per week for the whole year. And I'm, I'm on track doing that. I'm on track in my Bible reading. In fact, I just uh, finished almost reading the book of Ezekiel. I'm ahead of schedule a little bit. And so, therefore, continue doing what you're doing. Whatever it is you're doing, whatever goals. I'm not trying to get nosy in what you did say that you was going to do or what you're not going to do. I'm just trying to encourage you, encourage you to keep pressing on. Keep doing what you thought. that It was good enough to start and it's good enough to continue and it's certainly good enough to finish. And then Bible study, I talked about. And then prayer. Maybe you spend more time this year in prayer. Um, you ought to spend more time in prayer. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad and, and thankful that church is spending more time in prayer, especially on Wednesday night. That's what we call it, call it prayer meeting. And, and, you know, a lot of churches they don't spend time in prayer. And, and so that's something the Lord spoke my heart about. Hey, we need to spend more time in prayer, praying about these people's names, mentioning their names um, during prayer meeting. Because when I talk to these missionaries and I talk to people, saying, hey, we're mentioning your name uh, on Wednesday night in prayer. Uh, and, and we're praying for you throughout the week and, and daily and so forth. Boy, they're just thankful, uh, not so much for the money, but they're thanking me all the time for the prayers that we uh, send up to the Lord on their behalf. And then reading. I believe it's important to read. Um, one of um, my um, Christian friends, preacher friends, evangelist, he sent me a book this, um, was it last week? This past week. I don't know what the book cost, but it's a very nice book. And it's put together, not like one of these um, cloth, um, soft bound um, paperback books, and it's glued together. It's one of the real ones with the with the strings in it, and uh, it's a it's a it's a big um, atlas type, and it's and it's it's nice and hardback um, book. And spent I know when he sent it to me, it cost about almost fourteen dollars to send it to him. And he's an evangelist, and uh, so he probably spent maybe twenty five, at least thirty dollars, maybe on the book. Boy, I went and dove into it. Boys, were really good. And uh, I just mentioned that I didn't have it. And I wanted to get it. And he said, well, okay, that'd be good. He said, that'd be a great book to read. And you ought to read it, Mark. And that's got some good stuff in there. And it, it, you, you stick with that. It, it'll direct you. It, it lines up with the Bible and so forth. Next thing I know, a few days, boy, I had the thing in the mail. I was just shocked. Boy, I called him up, just thanked him and thanked him. And so you ought to be involved this year in reading a book, reading a book. Outside of the Word of God, um, that uh, agrees with the Word of God, that uh, that encourages you in the things of God. Then the second area that I spoke with you about, only personal spiritual growth, but personal soul winning, personal soul winning. This year, I don't really have a goal of where I'm looking for numbers. Like when I was at the hospital, say, hey, I got I got to reach a goal this week. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I do. But I thank God that this year I've been able to share the gospel personally with several, several people and um, give them the full gospel, not just say, um, here's a gospel track. And that's nothing in the world wrong with that. I'm talking about that in just a minute. But sharing the gospel more was one of my goals this year, being attentive. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't attentive in, in, in thinking about that um, Tuesday uh, when I was in, uh, in, in uh, Miss Jones' uh, room. I wasn't really painting. I was fixing to walk out the door and the Holy Spirit said, hey, you didn't share the gospel with them. I said, 
right? I didn't share the gospel with them. What am I doing? And I just sidetracked. I don't know why. And so um, the Holy Spirit led me to go back and share the gospel. That's why I believe that she truly got saved and that uh, it was real because the Holy Spirit said, hey, why don't you do something? And I heard him speak to me. And I said, hey, I said, I'd like to talk with you. And I thank God for doing that because, hey, you know, we're not always what we ought to be. We're not spiritual like we think we are. But God had to lead me, the pastor, to share the gospel. Imagine. Uh, I don't know if you like me, but, boy, I, I, I make mistakes. And, and the Lord showed me that uh, Tuesday. But sharing the gospel more this year. And then we talked about um, sharing uh, more gospel tracts. I have a goal this year of um, handing out so many gospel tracts. Handing out so many gospel tracts. And uh, I talked about if every one of us in here were to send out five tracts per day, Per member, there's seven members. That would be 11,050 tracts we handed out. Six tracts would be 12,900. And I said 10 tracts would be 22,100 tracts. Now, I don't know what anybody uh, set a goal. I don't know if you didn't set a goal. I know I set a goal to, set, to, to, to give out so many tracts. My, my, my kids can testify. I hand out gospel tracts everywhere. I hand them out everywhere I go. And, and that's what we ought to be doing. I know Miss Jane hangs them out because I see her gets a handful of medication. And I don't think she's um, like the fire with them and like the stove. And I, so I, I know that she's handing out gospel tracts. Man, that's great. We ought to be busy handing out the gospel this year. Um, doing more gospel envelopes. And out some, um, day I know that y'all grab some and we grab some and send some more. And then giving out DVDs, CDs, and the sword of the Lord's. And that's important. That's important. I know you might not uh, uh, agree with all of it. You might think it's a waste of time, but just like uh, the website. No, that wasn't always around. I know there's a lot of bad things on the internet. There's a lot of bad things on websites. But it's a ministry. Just like a car is a ministry. It can be a ministry. You can go to the pool hall or you can go pick up people for church. You can go to strip bars or you can and go out and visit people. Uh, same way with anything technology that comes out. Phones can be good. You can call people and invite them to church or get on there and gossip. You know, it's a tool. It depends on how you use it. CDs and DVDs are, are, are you, can, you can have bad DVDs. You can have bad movies. You can put bad throws on uh, rock music and so forth. Yeah, that can't be bad. But if you put gospel music, you put things on there that encourage people that maybe can't come to church. You, you think about people that can't make it at church. Well, no, they, they're thankful when I hand them some DVDs and say, hey, here's some good preaching. Not because it's mean. Sometimes I hand out other preachers. I say, here's some good preaching. You'll like this. Oh, they just thank me when I, when I, when I see them again. And, I, and then I give them some, some music um, sometimes. And, oh, boy, I ain't heard them songs in a long time. Oh, that's just precious to me. Oh, I ain't heard them songs since my mama took me to church. And hear all kinds of testimony where they're a blessing to people. So it's important that we give them out. Third thing, I talk about personal spiritual growth, personal soul winning, then I talk about personal tithes and offerings. Um, giving tithes um, is obedient. Giving offerings will reap God's blessing. Missions given. Now, thank God that, well, we've got um, eight um, people now that we help support with other churches around the country and around the world um, going and, and, and giving out the gospel tonight and preaching in pulpits across the land. And we thank the Lord for that. And then... I talk about, fourthly, the personal commitment to the church. Uh, talking about um, being committed and not surrendering. We're thankful that we have two new members. And thank God for that. That was a blessing. And then uh, being faithful to church. And, and we don't have a problem with most of that. Um, no, the problem is Mr. Reagan, he just had so many health problems, sometimes he can't get here. And, you know, God won't beat up him for that. I ain't going to beat him up for that. Nobody should beat him up for that. Boy, he'd be here if he could, I know. And so we just need to pray for him and, 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 and be encouragement to him. And then to get involved in special days. Get involved in special days, just like um, Anniversary Sunday. I know people invited people. Did anybody go? No. But you know what? I know that people invite people. People invite people. Um, and so we have to get involved. Easter Sunday's coming up on April 24th, which is hopefully when we're going to do our Lord's Supper. Um, I think I mentioned that. No, no, we're still going to do that. Good um, morning. Good morning. Um, and uh, invite people. That's a good time. A lot of people go out to church on Easter Sunday because they want to show off their new clothes. And I know that's the wrong reason to go to church, but I'll take a whole house full if they'll come and I can give them the gospel. They can wear their white dresses and their, and their white little shoes and white stockings. Oh, I can't stand white stockings. I don't know. I just don't like white stockings. 
Um, I, ain't never, I don't like them on Beth. I don't like them on nobody. I just ain't doing it. But anyway, but they want to come and show off all that. They'll find their little hats. Man, let them all come. But invite people on Easter Sunday, April 24th. Then we got Mother's Day coming in, Father's Day, and Independence Day, and the fair in August, and the Grandparents' Day on September the 11th, and the King James Bible Conference on October the 9th through the 14th. Get involved in these uh, different um, days that we'll be um, celebrating and inviting people to church. Now, that's, that was the message on January the 2nd. Now, as a review, I want to give you, real quick, we ain't going to be able to look at all these. I'm just going to give them to you, run down them. You write them down because they don't give you time to. I'm going to give you 15 words. And every one of these words are action words. The Holy Spirit of God, give them to you. Give them to me. They're written in the Word of God. And there's some more. These are the 15 I thought of real quickly. And there's other ones. With verses to go with them. That tells us, hey, we're going to be busy. They're action words. That means you're going to be doing something. And if you're going to be abounding or, or, or growing in Christ and maturing as a Christian, then we've got to be doing something. We've got to have some action in our life spiritually. We're not going to grow just by coincidence. We've got to grow on purpose spiritually. Therefore, God tells us, encourages us, gives us these words to encourage us. These words describe what we ought to be doing as a Christian. Fifteen words. The word abound. I might turn to a couple by you writing them down. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. You write that down. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. I'm going to read the verse. The first word is abound. Verse 7. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 8, Corinthians 8, 7. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. God tells us we're going to be abounding, just like the verse that we actually read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Stand fast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're going to be abounding in the things of Christ. And then the second word is add. These are all alphabetical. Add, add, A-D-D, and 2 Peter. 2 Peter, I'm just going to turn it real quick. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. It says, and beside this, Giving all diligence add to your faith. That's your saving faith, virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, these things that he just said to add to your Christian faith and abound, there's that word abound again. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That word abound, that word add. Now the third word, bear some fruit. Boy, we ought to bear fruit. John 15, 8 says that we ought to be bearing fruit. Are we bearing fruit? It says much fruit. Not just a little fruit, but much fruit. Then the word continue. Continue in 2 Timothy 3, 14. I'll read that one real quick since I'm right here at it. 2 Timothy uh, 3.14, and here is where Paul is talking to Timothy, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. God tells us to continue in our Christian walk. Continue in what you've learned. Don't just be happy where you are. Continue growing. Continue abounding. Go further in your Christian walk. Then in Philippians 4, 9, it says do. The next word is do. Do. We ought to be doing something for Christ. Doing something in the church. Doing something for our Lord and Savior. Philippians 4, 9. And then earnestly contend in Jude, verse 3. Earnestly contend. It says earnestly contend for the faith. Boy, there's a time before we ought to stand up and we ought to be earnestly contending for the faith. I ain't talking about starting fights. I'm talking about we ought to stand for the King James Bible. We ought to stand for what's right when people put down our God and they blaspheme our God. Boy, we ought to stand and say, hey, I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. And I'm going to stand. Today we was in a place being painted today. And um, they, they knew who I was as soon as I walked in their door. And um, they said, hey, preacher. And I said, hey, how you doing? And they said, fine. They knew exactly who I was. I knew one of the gentlemen in there. In fact, they knew Brother Reagan. And said, boy I, I, boy, I really appreciate you picking up Brother Reagan. I see you picking him up and, and so forth. And I said, well, that's great. I don't know where they live exactly. But they've been watching me pick him up. 
And so that's a testimony. That's a testimony. And I had bought a big box of tapes in there. Um, it was at a, a, a different place. And, and, it's, and there was a lot of tapes in there. So I some good preachers. Uh, Mickey Carter and so forth. And, and, uh, and, uh, and so I asked them about these tapes. And so I bought them. I said, listen, I ain't burning these. I said, these are good ones. And they laughed. They said, that's a fine preacher. And so... Uh, they knew exactly who I was. There wasn't no question about what Bible I believe. One of the guys spoke up. He said, I'm with you, preacher. He said, there's only one Bible. He said, the King James. I said, man, where was you at <laughs> two years ago? <laughs> he said, but I'm with you. And so we just sit and had a good old time. Everybody listening and talking. It made no difference. Man. We're going to earnestly contend for the faith. We're going to just keep going. Hey. Next word, grow. We're going to be growing. Talks about as uh, newborn babes. I'm growing. Second Peter three eighteen. Boy, we'll be growing as Christians. Boy, if we're not growing, we're dead. We're stagnant. We're lukewarm. The Bible says, but we ought to be growing in the things of God. And then the next word is increase. Increase. In First Thessalonians four ten talks about increasing. Boy, we ought to be increasing. All these words are action words for the believer to be increasing, growing, and so forth. And then mortify. That means to put to death. Mortify is the next word. Mortify in Colossians 3, 5 and 6 tells us we ought to mortify the flesh, the works of the flesh, the, the things that we do in our body that's uh, ungodly and um, wicked and sinful. Boy, we're putting things to death and we ought to be alive into the things of the things of Christ. Then in a uh, famous verse in Philippians 3, 14 says the word press. Press. Paul said, I'm pressing. Boy, what, we ought to be pressing just like Paul the apostle. We're going to be pressing. And that's what Paul said. And then read. In Colossians 4, 16, the next word is read. We're going to be reading. Paul tells us to be reading. Don't be don't like to read. I, I wish to God I was a fast reader. Beth is a fast reader. and uh, But she says she can't comprehend half of it. And I said, well, I can comprehend it. I just wish I could read faster. And I said, I wish we could swap places and a little bit and, and put the two together. That's really good. And, but that would be wonderful. But I, I love to read, but I'm a slow reader. Uh, I looked the other day at Beth, and I said, you know, I'm never going to read all these books in my library. And I said, not as slow as I read. And, but you know what? I just keep on pressing. I just keep on reading a book at a time, book at a time, and keep growing and learning in the things of Christ. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, reading. Uh, Colossians 4, 16, I guess I gave you that. And then run in 1 Corinthians 9, 24. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, we'll read that one. We could have read them all, but uh, for sake of time, well, I'll read that one. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it says run. Uh, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. What Paul says, run that we may obtain the prize. God's going to reward us for running the race that he has set before us. He set a race before every born-again believer, every child of God, he expects us to run that race and run it to the best of our ability. And God says if we'll do that and we won't quit in the middle and we won't stop reading our Bible and we won't stop witnessing and we won't stop doing what God has taught us to do and we'll run our race to the end that he says, hey, I'll give you a reward. You'll win the prize. And that's what we're going to be running for. And then the word shine in Philippians 2.14. Philippians 2.14. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.15. Philippians 2.15. Let's see if I can get there real quick and I read it. Philippians 2.15. Uh, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. For it's our job and duty and responsibility as born-again believers, as the sons of God, it says in that verse, to be shining in this dark and crooked world. And boy, don't we live in a dark and crooked world where things are going wrong on every hand. We're living in a wicked generation. When you got sawbacks up down the street that's being praised and patted on the back and given more rights than the people that believe the Bible. Boy, we're living in the last days, that's for sure. And we ought to be shining. It ought to be easy to shine in this world as dark as it is, to be honest with you. But so many, few Christians are shining. But that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's an action word, shine. And then the word study. The word study, as we know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study 
to show thyself approved unto God. Now that's an action word again. We ought to put some action to our uh, uh, our study and do some study. Comparing Scripture with Scripture, looking at a Scripture within its context, getting a concordance, doing some cross-references, doing some word studies, um, doing some background study. Hey, you know what? I don't know probably 10% of everything there is to know in the world. I bet you there's 90% more I can learn somehow. There is. I don't know if you're like me. I, I, I'm i just an ignorant preacher that believes this Bible from cover to cover, word for word, every jot and tittle of it, I believe it. But you know what? There's a whole lot I don't know. There's a whole lot I don't know. And boy, I'm eager to learn as much as I can. I'm eager. Therefore, I need to study to show myself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then the last word is work. Work. James 1.25. James 1.25. It says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law and liberty, which is the word of God, and continueth, there's that word continue again, continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, there's that word doer, of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Going back also to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we shall both be always earned steadfastly abounding in the work of the Lord. There's work involved. Boy, this takes work around here to get things done. Boy, we're just a small church, but that'll make a difference. Still got work to do. Still got work to do. The Bible says work, and that's what we want to be doing. And I said all that. Those are 15 action words. Those are not words that you can sit down and say, let me study over them. I can do these sitting in my recliner. No. You got to get up and do something. You got to work. These are action words. That means to get up and go. When God told Jonah, arise and go. Boy, those are action words. That means to get up and go and make some uh, haste about yourself. Now, my dad used to tell me, he said, boy, go do something. He'd tell me to go down there and go get some tool. Boy, I'd better take my time. Or he'd be coming looking for me. I would take my time the next time. And I told you a story. Boy, I, I did that one time. I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked on, on our goals for, for the day. <laughs> it wasn't for the yearly goals. He wasn't. Uh, uh, I had a daily, um, uh, like you say, yearly um, resolutions. Well, we had a moment by moment resolution. It was go get me a hammer or something. And I got sidetracked with a cat or dog or something or playing. And boy, he come looking for me. The next time, boy, he straightened me up. And boy, I went to running after that. I ain't kidding. Even to this day, sometimes when I'm at home, he wants something. I'll run to the backyard and get it and run back. I'm afraid he'll give me a whooping. Because uh, he told me to go get something and he wants me to go get it now. He don't, know, he don't be sitting there waiting all day about it. That's the way God tells us to do. Boy, he wants us to be busy and working. These are action words. They're like he told Jonah, arise and go. Jonah didn't arise and go. Not in the right direction. God tells us to arise and go. These 15 words are describing a Christian that is spiritually mature. A person who is growing spiritually in their Christian walk in Christ. A person that's doing these things, I guarantee you, if they're abounding and adding and bearing fruit and continuing and doing and earnestly contending and growing and increasing and mortifying and pressing and reading and running and shining and studying and working, you know what? I guarantee you, that person is growing in Christ. They are becoming a spiritual, mature person being. <coughs> but if you find someone who's not abounding, who's not adding anything, who's not bearing no fruit, they're not continuing, they're stopping, they're not doing nothing for Christ, they're not earnestly contending uh, for the faith, they're not growing at all, they're decreasing, they're not uh, mortifying the flesh, they're not pressing um, uh, towards anything, they're not reading anything but comic books and TV guide, uh, they're, not, um, doing, they're not running any races, uh, they're not shining, uh, they're not studying, they're not working. Those people are dead in their trespasses and sin, I guarantee you. Those people are not abounding. Those people are not growing in Christ. Instead, they're a stumbling block and a hindrance to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
So I encourage you. That's it. I'm here tonight just to encourage you. Whatever, whatever your goals were, your resolutions, or whatever you want to call them, at the beginning of the year, they've got a little sidetrack. They've got a little behind in this or that or the other thing. Hey, I'm just here to encourage you to keep on. We all in the same boat. I'm, I'm behind on a couple of little things, but I'm ahead in other areas. So the message used to me as well to keep on, don't give up and say, well, you know how we are most time. We we have a root New Year's goal and, and we do it for a couple weeks or maybe a month, maybe two months, and then we, well, I'm tired. We might well just forget that till next year. We'll here we'll do it again then. No, I'm here as a as a review, as a checkup. I don't know where you at. I'm not trying to get in your business. Just here to encourage you to keep pressing, keep going, keep adding, keep running, keep working. Keep mortifying. Doing what God's asked you to do. And lay on your heart to do. And what we ought to be doing anyway. Whatever it is, I encourage you to do so. My dear Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for thy precious word. We thank the Lord that we can look into the perfect law of liberty. And Lord, we'll continue therein. Lord, we'll be blessed. And we'll grow. And boy, our relationship with you will be so close, we can feel you. And I just thank you, God, for giving you your precious word to us. I thank you, Lord, for giving us the Holy Spirit that uh, teacheth uh, us all things. And I pray to God that you'd help us do our part, though. We still have a part. We still have these things to do. We still have to study. We still have to read. We still have to meditate. We still have to memorize. We still have to do these things as you tell us to. And I pray to God you'd help us do our part. And I pray that you'd help us tonight to have a good night's rest. Help us have a good day tomorrow. Bless this week. Bless the upcoming meeting with Brother Ben uh, Carver at uh, Harmony Grove. Looking forward to the Lord to hearing the man of God preach and proclaim your word. And I pray to God you just have a good meeting, a good time together with other believers in Christ. And we just pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name because you're worthy. Amen.